Hello, everybody. Oh, wait. What's that? YouTube has changed since you first started shooting the Beast Unleashed video series? Okay. Fast forward. What's going on, YouTube? Brolic Beast here in the place. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's just not me. Um, all right, so today we're going to go over um, some audio, some video, and th just covering the basic operation of the Beast Unleashed theater. All right, so we're going to look at Lumigen, uh, dynamic tone mapping. We're going to look at the QSC, uh, QSIS DSP, and how, how there are various modes and how each of those modes are used in the theater as well, and some other, uh, some other uh, details. All right, so there will be a few granularities, but we're really going to delve into the granularities of video and audio and how they are used in this theater. Okay, you see... One of the greatest audio visual treats ever made is right here behind me on the screen right now. You'll also notice it looks a little different. So currently the screen is 235. Uh, I'll explain that in the video. Stay tuned. All right, so first I'm gonna go ahead and give you a rundown of what we're looking at, and then we will dive into the details regarding how did we configure the Lumigen Radiance Pro to give us what we're looking at, okay? So this is, I, I use Plex, you may use Kodi or whatever you want to use. Um, this is my primary movie interface. I also use it to view 4K um, Atmos DTSX uh, demos that I created myself. So this is currently using NLS, non-linear scaling, to expand the image to fit a CinemaScope screen. Now, my screen is 16.9 by default. However, I've recently applied masking um, just to get the CinemaScope experience, and I just wanted to try something different. And um, I am, I am uh, liking it right now. Uh, preference, um, neither is superior. Um, they're simply just different experiences and slightly so. So, but right now we're running CinemaScope. So I'm using NLS to fill the menu screen. So. I'm viewing everything. I'm not looking at black bars anywhere. Um, now I can easily go to native 16.9 with the black bars and I'll show you that soon. But right now this is how I navigate. And I believe this is the most uh, comfortable way. I mean, you, you get, if you bought yourself a CinemaScope screen, use the screen area, you know, nobody wants to see black bars. When you see black bars, at least in a menu, when you see black bars in the menu, that's what it looks like. Come on, seriously. Okay. I go into my demo section, I pick a demo. This is a CinemaScope demo. I hit play. You're gonna see it start playing. Um, and then after about three seconds, you'll see the image uh, go to its native 235 aspect ratio, eliminating the black bars on the top and the bottom. It cancels out NLS completely and returns to native. You hit play. Boom, there you go. It, it just expanded. So now it's filling the entire CinemaScope screen with content. All right, there is a lot of value in that. Um, and then now we're getting ready to go into the details and just show you how you can figure this in your Lumigen. Okay, before we dive into the how, I want to show you the three different ways to view content. And I just picked this screenshot because it's cool so this is full cinemascope 235 image all right now to view this in a 16.9 format this is what it would look like okay so please note it's the image has shrunk and actually let me go ahead and hit this light so you can see how it looks as it pertains to the screen itself okay so as you see the light turn on you see the black bars on either side. Now you also see the two, three, five. Um, you, you see the black bars on top and the bottom because NLS has not been engaged. So if I go ahead and I engage NLS, here's what happens. Okay, so now NLS has stretched the image to fit the full CinemaScope screen. However, because the content itself is already two, three, five aspect ratio, you still have black bars on the top and the bottom. The image is currently squished because this image is not meant to be seen this way. So 
Now, now, if we were looking at 16.9 content, different story. Right now, the 16.9 content would fill the screen and would be all set. But with 235 content, you need to add that extra step where I have a program to my remote where I hit a button and then it will expand so that you get the native 235 aspect ratio with no pixel mapping. This is how it's set up uh, normally. So I hit the button. Boom. Now the 235 image fits the 235 aspect ratio screen. All right. Now let's dig into the technical details on how we accomplish this. The first thing you want to do is set up NLS on your Lumigen. If you have not yet done so, I strongly implore you to do so. Uh, I've linked two videos below in the description of this YouTube video. Um, go check them out. I shot these videos uh, many years ago, maybe five, six years ago, maybe even seven years ago uh, with my previous Lumigen processors on how to set up NLS. Uh, the process has not changed. They've managed to maintain a continuity throughout their menu design. I think that's great. It means I don't have to relearn a new structure. That is a plus, believe me. When you have something as complex as a Lumigen, any continuity between platforms is great. So check those videos out. If you have not set up NLS, I will pause, come back, and then hit play after you've set up NLS on your Lumigen. Brief pause. And we're back. Okay, now, here is what you do once NLS is set up on your Lumigen Radiance Pro. You go ahead and open up the menu in your Lumigen. You make sure you select the input that your primary source is on. And you can repeat this for multiple inputs, but start with your primary source content. So hit enter, go down to options, hit enter again, go to aspect setup, and then enter the auto aspect uh, menu. Um, I use HDMI plus image for the auto aspect control, sticky aspect override, I keep to off. NLS when applicable, I keep to on, that is that is critical. And letterbox zoom, I keep to normal. Okay, so you make those changes, save, and then you're set. Here is where I'm going to uh, provide a recommendation for content organization. <clears throat> uh, this has worked very, very well for me, and I was just urge anyone out there with a relatively large collection to um, organize it in this way. It just makes things easy to find. Um, so let's start at the top. Uh, playlists, um, I won't try to recommend playlists that you that you do. I have my own playlist for bass, uh, surround demo, it's around, um, uh, surround demos, a list of surround demos, a list of uh, visual demos, a list of HDR tests. Um, but the uh, playlists are subjective. So I encourage you to develop your own in accordance with your own tastes. Uh, 4K UHD demos, those are demos that I created for specific uh, purposes. Um, they usually are comprised of my favorite scenes from movies. So there are a few of them here. Some from Alita, the Barb Royal, Flashback, uh, an explosion from... Uh, this movie, Atomic Blonde Hotel Assault. So they're just a series of demo scenes that were created. These are all in 4K UHD. Okay, next we have 4K UHD movies. Um, yeah, this is uh, very straightforward. Um, I usually keep mine sorted by title just because it's easier to find that way. But on occasion, I will actually sort mine by date added. I, I do this when I'm in the mood for just watching my newer movies, movies that I've added more recently. So these are the more recent movies that I've added. And so, but so you can, you can have them sorted either way. All right. Next up we have HD demos because HD is still alive and kicking uh, somewhere in the world. No, I'm joking. Uh, some HD still looks very good. So I have demos are created from HD content. These are things that you can't find on 4K. Like in the Jungle Book, just the, just the scene where Shere Khan attacks Mowgli and Bagheera. Uh, create a demo for that. Uh, Children of Men, an excellent movie. If you haven't seen it, rent it, buy it, whatever you have to do. Excellent movie. Uh, Children of Men, Roadside Ambush, uh, Star Wars, uh, First Escape. Um, so these are my HD demos that I currently have. Then we have HD movies. Uh, the, this is basically my 
entire movie collection I've been collecting since 2009. Um, so before, before 4K UHD came out, uh, what was it, 2014? 2014, 2015. Yeah, 2016 maybe, I don't know. But yeah, before 4K UHD came out, we had the Blu-ray. And so this is, uh, this is just my entire collection here. It's, uh, it's a pretty large collection. So you yeah, so have your HD movies, your 1080p movies. Uh, then I have my music. Um, these you organize however you want to organize it by artist, playlist, recently played, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, technical trailers. Now this is probably my favorite category because these are all of the demos for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, uh, IMAX, like these are all in here. They're available for, um, online to download for free. These aren't, you know, these are available for anybody. Um, but if you have a system capable of uh, playing back these immersive audio next gen formats, then download them because you can play them back and they will definitely flex your system. Most of them will. All right, the Legacy Collection. Legacy Collection is some older movies that I have. Um, these are movies, some come from DVD, some come from Blu-ray. Um, yeah, they're usually older, still fun. Many of them are still fun. Uh, these are some older movies. TV shows, I'm not a huge TV guy, uh, but this, this pretty much rounds out what I like about TV. All right, here we have a native 16.9 image. This is my remote. This is the Logitech Harmony Elite. So I use the chapter up and chapter down buttons to uh, manage the aspect ratio switching uh, for all oh, switching from 16.9 native to 16.9 and LS. So I have the chapter down button set to set the image to the native 16.9. But if I press and hold the chapter down button, then it engages NLS. And I'm just going to go ahead and go back and forth a couple of times so you can see the difference. Uh, chapter down button for 16.9 native. Okay. And then press and hold chapter down button for 16.9 NLS. Okay. Now let's take a look at 235. Okay, so here we have uh, the, the Lumigen in 16.9 mode. Now this is a 235 movie. So what I have is the chapter up button programmed to fill the screen with 235 native content. So I'm going, to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and tap that one time. And then there we go. It expands the 235 image. And it's technically not expanding because the 16.9 image will be processed. The 235, this is the native... Um, aspect ratio as output by the projector using the zoom methods so of the black bars are technically above and below the screen being absorbed the light is being absorbed by the masking this is the actual 235 image being put out by the projector okay so um again use a three button process use your chapter up to engage 235 use the chapter down button to engage 169 and press and hold the chapter down button to engage nls Using that single button cluster with the multiple functions makes it so easy to control aspect ratio um, at a whim. Okay, so how do you engage Lumigen dynamic tone mapping? You go ahead and hit menu, uh, select the input that you're currently on, go to options, select options, and then you're going to go down to HDR setup. And then this HDR mapping menu is where you would make uh, all of your changes. Um, you can adjust it for uh, the, the highlight, low light. <clears throat> um, you set your crossover points, uh, max default, dynamic levels. This is what uh, mine is set to currently. Um, and yeah, so it's it really is that. Once you uh, go here, I'm... Um, I believe after doing the latest update, uh, I followed um, a recommendation that I saw uh, on the AVS forum and I set these to their default settings. So that is currently, um, these are currently the default settings 
Um, as I play with it more, I may adjust the parameters. Uh, right now, I'm very happy with the results after the, the latest update. So I see no need to do that right now. That could change. Who knows? But that is how you engage HDR uh, DTM. Take a look at the spotlight itself and the light as it emits. And then look at the rest of the room. The rest of the room does not get bright. It is just the HDR image being put out by that, uh, by that spotlight. So right now it's off, on. See the spotlight got brighter. The light being emitted got brighter. The rest of the room remained dark. Off. On. Off. Once again. On. Off. So these are my current settings. So let me take you in a little bit of details here. Take a look at the entire picture, the relationship between the black on the mountain and the white of the snow, uh, as well as the blue fire leaving Mecha Godzilla's mouth. Uh, this is from Ready Player One. On. Off. On. Off. On. Off. Take a look at the lightsaber, uh, meeting with the chain whip. Uh, notice the very dark spaces remain dark. Uh, wherever you see some type of lighting, including the background, which is a basically a backlit wall, that's going to get brighter as the lightsaber gets brighter. On. Off. On. Off. On. Off. And this is the antimatter explosion uh, from Angels and Demons, the movie. On. You see how that central explosion got really bright? Off. On. Off. On. In this clip, I want you to take a look at the chimpanzee that's currently running. Uh, so the explosion it gets brighter. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up because there's so much of it. Uh, but the explosion gets brighter. You see the fire uh, get a brighter look to it. But if you look at his fur, when I turn DTM on, his fur will show better highlights. But the shadowed side, the left side of his body, will remain dark. Okay, On. See, the shadow side of his body remains dark. Like that is that is the goal. That that dynamic piece of the, of the puzzle. Off. On. Off. On. Off. This is one I really like. Uh never enough uh, from the greatest showman. Uh, DTM on, off. See how the whites in her dresses because they're being hit directly by the spotlight. Uh, with the DTM on, they get very bright. And also her face as well, while the shadows in her hair and the shadows on the dress still remain. Ex excellent contrast. Off. On. Off. On. So the age old question, 16, nine versus two, three, five. Is there a superior aspect ratio? Is there an inferior aspect ratio? So I've been using 16, nine, the floor to ceiling screen since 2017. And yeah, January, 2017. And I have thoroughly enjoyed the experience. I have no doubt that I will continue to enjoy the experience in the future at various points. Now, currently, I have the magnetic masking on the screen to mask the screen to CinemaScope 235. And I am really enjoying that experience. Um, I'm enjoying it for a few reasons. 
Um, the first uh, is sight lines uh, to the rear row. Um, the sight lines are better as far as where you move your neck, etc. Also, the just the widescreen is pretty cool. It is um pretty neat to just view something something a little different. Now, in my previous theater, I also used a CinemaScope screen, and uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, but um, I built this room with a floor-to-ceiling 16-9 screen because I wanted that IMAX experience, which I have been getting. And the moment that I want to get that experience again, I will simply pop the masking panels off and enjoy my full-screen content. So I don't think there's a clear winner. My recommendation is go with a 16-9 screen plus masking so you have the options, especially if you're using a Lumigen with the NLS feature. You cannot go wrong with either one, you know, either aspect ratio, but get the 16 9 screen so you have options. It is better to have a 16 9 screen and mask to CinemaScope than to start with a CinemaScope screen and then have to mask on either side because you ultimately end up with a picture that is smaller than it could have been if you had gone 16 9 originally. Um, that is at least my opinion. There are many others who disagree. If you started with a 235 CinemaScope screen, that's fine. I had a CinemaScope screen for years before we built this house in my previous theater, and I enjoyed every second of it. But if you have the option, if you're in the middle of a build or planning a build, um, I would highly recommend going with a 16-9 screen and then just have the option for masking so you can go back and forth. You may never even use the, 16, uh, the full 16-9 surface area. You may just use the masking the entire time you're in your house and in your theater, but the option is there. There is no such thing as too many options. Unless you're configuring a car, then you can have too many options. But other than that, that is my recommendation.